first of all, when was the last time you were back in Sacramento? Do 2016. That was it? That was it. This is when they were doing the construction of the arena. And then they brought back the 2005 WNBA champions. And then they brought back former Kings players. That's when we all were here. Well, not all the players for the Monarchs, but majority of us was here. So that was the last time. I had a couple of other opportunities, but it just the timing wasn't right. What do you think of just this building? I mean, can you imagine being able to play here in front of the Monarchs fans like you did? And Man, it, <laughs> the hell, this wasn't around. We was like, <laughs> like this. I haven't had like the full tour of it, but it's amazing. And like where it's like located, and the hotel right across the street from it, it's like they doing a lot of amazing things in, in uh, Sacramento. But at the end of the day, a gym is a gym, arena is an arena. But if we had this back in the day, what? But when we won that championship, it's funny. This is a, this is a true story. We won a championship, but the Kings was getting a new locker room. And I hit the Maloofs up. I said, yo, who won the championship? They did a new renovation in our locker room. Like, yo, give us, give us our dues. Give us our respect. We grind just like the men do. We do, we do it the right way. Um, but, I mean, this is a great arena. This, you know, fingers crossed. We're going to pray up tonight that they win, <laughs> win this game tonight. But I'm excited to be back in Sacramento. I'm seeing a lot of old friends. I see Ruthie tonight. I see Mo tonight. But... This experience overall to be able to uh, speak to the young ladies that's like, again, trying to fight into the industry, whether it be any business that they're trying to start or sports, don't really matter. But just to be able to tell people my story is like, is what it's about. Because when you're done playing the game and lacing them up, what do you have after that? So I have a lot of things going on, but at this moment, I'm really enjoying being a grandma, because that's like everything to me. She's amazing. So, yeah, I'm excited to see the game tonight and um, have fun. What's it like to still, I mean, I know not having the franchise here in Sacramento, fingers crossed that that comes back mm -hmm. today, but to still have that support, not only from fans, but like you mentioned, former teammates who are still in this area, what's that support like and mean to you? It means everything, because it can be play the game of basketball, never talk to each other again. But we're not like that. Like Ruthie, when I got inducted, Ruthie wasn't able to make uh, make it to the Hall of Fame. Tisha was there. Little Jill was there. Coach McHugh, Cherry was there. Uh, Mo Ambers, she was coming, but you know, an incident happened in the family. So all the ones that I reached out to was able to, and then we have a lot of former <laughs> players that coach. So it would have been great to have the whole 2005 team there, but. The communication, we still communicate with each other. We're going to try and start doing some trips together because this game is just basketball. Friendships last forever, teammates. You know, I have some great teammates. So I'm excited to see Ruthie tonight, Mo tonight, hang out, tell old stories. And, of course, they're going to try and embarrass me like always. But, but no, I'm excited. This is a great, great atmosphere. Um, month of March, women, all about women. So, but every day is about women. Every day, and um, so again, I'm excited to be back at SAC. Back, excited to see you, <laughs> old friend. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to the game tonight. Hang I, out. I put myself in your shoes, and I remember talking to you right before the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. when it got announced. And I was thinking to myself, man, I'd be wearing this jacket pretty much everywhere. What? Do you, do you, pretty, do you take it everywhere or no? When? Yes, I do. And Mo was like, "Where the jacket, Maurice?" He was like, "Bring the jacket, bring the ring." And I had the ring, and then I was helping Candace get my grandbaby ready, and I forgot the ring, so I'm pissed at her. But, um, but no, this, this, is, I see Charles Barkley doing it. I see, like, I'm going, I'm, I'm aware when I do interviews, when I have like special uh, occasions to do, um, signing autographs, speaking engagement, I wear the jacket. It's like, this is like the end of the road when it comes to you playing the game, but it's the beginning of more opportunities. Wow. What was that weekend like? I mean, I got to speak with you beforehand, and, and we were looking forward to it, and I know you got, you know, there's a lot of people I got to thank, got your speech on your mind, which was fantastic, by the way. Thank you. Just, what, what was that whole weekend experience like? That weekend was so amazing. No, it, was, it was great. It was like royalty, but... I think because, you know, when you have to do a speech, you want to make sure you don't forget people. You want to make sure that 
your story is heard. You want to make sure that you get the message out there. Um, but the weekend alone was, oh, it was overwhelming. But I was able to put myself in a in a situation to just take it all in, cause it's very stressful. You're on your feet nonstop doing stuff from the day you get there to the day you end. So I just made sure to take it all in and and, and be ready for the moment. And uh, as soon as I got on stage to prep for my speech. And then when it was time to do the speech, I took a deep breath and I was like, God got me. God is going to help me through this night. And um, I took a moment because it's unreal when you look out and see former WNBA players. Because Tina was there, Cheryl was there, Tisha was there, you know, my family was there. Then you got Dwayne Wade and you got Isaiah Thomas, you got Chris. I mean, like, and then you got Rick. I, and I think that is what made it even more special. My family, my teammates. But then you got Chris and Rick and myself that represented Sacramento, the Kings and the Monarchs the right way. You could not ask for a better time to get inducted into the Hall of Fame. That was incredible. That's yeah. Incredible. When you think about what you're doing here tonight and women's empowerment and the, and the discussion panel that you had to be a part with, Matina and even Katie, what was kind of what you wanted the people who attended that to kind of come away from knowing? That it's, it's not going to take um, just you as an individual. It's going to take us all. Um, women empowerment, it can be any route. It can be any adventure. It can be whatever you pave it to be, but know what you want to do. And that's all I'm going to keep always telling that. If it's something in this world that you want to do, do it for yourself. When you do it, be prepared to do it because you will face some hurdles. You will face some, some obstacles, but know why you're doing it. And... We can talk about breaking into the industry. We could talk about owning our own business. We could talk about so many different things in this world. But without each other, without the support of other individuals that's motivated to be just as good as you or the people that's in your corner that's going to help you be the best that you could possibly be, it's impossible. Wow. So it's like the WNBA has been around. I got drafted in 99, but it was the ABL where I first started, where my, my name be, people started knowing who I was from the ABL, and then I just moved into the WNBA. And I'm thankful for Coach McHugh telling Jerry, you better draft Yolanda if you want to win a championship. So I'm thankful, and I still have great relationships with Coach McHugh and Cherry. They was at the Hall of Fame as well. So and, and you, you, you play game. Like, you, you doing this, but at the end of the day, you're going to have those relationships. And that's what it's about for me, playing this game, empowering young, other young ladies, giving thanks to the pioneers before me, giving thanks to my mom, who was a big inspiration in my life, my sister. So uh, you can't accomplish anything by yourself. You always got to have a great supporting cast, and I did. That's awesome. When you think about what the league is right now, where you came in to where you ended, and now you fast forward to today, how, how do you look at the talent level? I mean, can it touch what you guys did back then, or is it more even better because of the foundation that you guys laid? I think it's a little bit of both. I think the, the players in my era, the players before me and then the players during my time, I mean, you got a lot of those players in the Hall of Fame now. Right. Sure. Um, but it was just the passion and how we played the game, and it was just how we carried ourselves. It was how we mentored the younger players to help them get the opportunity that was given to us. And now you have a lot of players that back in the day was wishing to be in a WNBA, but now you have players motivated to make it into the WNBA, get drafted into the WNBA. It's funny because when I played this game and I was traveling overseas, the teams in Europe, they only wanted WNBA players. And that's weird. 
because a lot of the WNBA, a lot of players don't make it into the WNBA because you still have a lot of players, veteran players that still play in this game that they don't want to give up because they have the passion for it, they love it. And then now you got players like Tarasi still playing. Right. Sue Burr, or Tarasi about to retire, but you got Sue Burr who was going in her 21st uh, season. Like, it's crazy. Well, how many? Yeah, 21. Yeah, I think you got it right. 21. Yeah. It's crazy. And then you got Asia. Play for the Aces. Like, you, you just have so many. And I can't mention one person because, like, it's just crazy where we are today. But you still have a lot of players that was veterans that are paving the way for the young players. But now you have players retiring that are now women coaching on the men's staff being general managers, like, like we're, we've come so far, but we've come so far because opportunities was given to us and we took advantage of those opportunities. Opportunities wasn't like that back in the day. The opportunities are fresh, they're new. So if you're given an opportunity, you better jump on it. It's a risk, but it's a risk you should be willing to take. That's well said. I got my two more for you. Can you just check this one real quick, make sure it's, I think it's good. Um, when you think about being a Hall of Famer. I know that carries a stature to it. I know if someone called me a Hall of Famer, you best believe I would probably change a lot of what I did. To go from NBA All-Star to a champion, to be one of the you know, the founding fathers, founding mothers of the WNBA, to then being a Hall of Famer, do you feel like life has changed for you in any sort of way? No. For the simple fact, I'm always, I'm always yo. I'm still the same humble individual that, oh my God, that's your line of grip. And I'm like, I'm chill with it. Because I'm, you're never above the game. You, you, you're great at it, but, but you're never above it. And I, I'm thankful for the opportunities that's been given to me, but when I wear this jacket, it feels great. It feels like it belongs on me. But when I got told that I was a finalist, I was like, ah, whatever. I brushed it off. Right. But then when I got the phone call that I would be inducted, it said, hell, <laughs> I guess I did the job right. You, you know, it makes you think and, and be like surreal about it and say, man, I guess I did it the right way. I guess, I guess people paid attention to how I played the game, how I carried myself, how I was as an individual. Because it's hard work to play against the best players day in and day out. And if you're not prepared, if you don't have the preparation, like, like Katie was saying, I watched film. I started watching film when I was in high school. So it was nothing new for me. I realized in my junior year, because I was better, I was, softball was my first love, not basketball. Some people know, some people don't. Like, softball was my first love. My home run record for hell for like 20 plus years just got broke five years ago. Like, it's five, five years ago. So it's crazy how I had to make a decision. And the decision was, when I go to college, will it be on a softball scholarship or will it be on a basketball scholarship? Like, I was great in both of them. Mm -hmm. But I made a decision that I can get more out of basketball than I could out of softball because softball, you was just going to college for softball. Basketball can give you a different avenue. Mm -hmm. So that's why I had to change my mindset on how, and how I was going to start preparing and prepping myself and getting right. So I started investing more in basketball. That's great. And it paid off. What position were you? All of them. Oh. They tried me at they tried me at pitching. <laughs> Shit went all over the place. They tried me at back I said, hell, I can't squat that damn long, man. What the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I played when I first my freshman year, I was a first baseman. Then uh, the shortstop, she graduated. Okay. So they moved me from first base to shortstop and put my my um, my play sister. Her name was Shalonda. I was Yolanda. Like we was the best duo, like we was cranking it out. And um uh, then I played outfield, but I was too damn bored. I wasn't paying attention, so they brought me back in field. <laughs> You're hilarious. Um, but yeah, you can put me wherever you want me to want to put me. I can do it. I mean, I played strikeout. I played snow football. Wow. I mean, I did it all. Climbed trees, fell out of trees. Like it was. I threw eggs at a house. I rang the door. I mean, like I was bad growing up. I got my ass whooped. I mean, I got butt whoopings. Yeah. I got put on punishment. Like I lived the life. Um, but at the end of the day, I. I as you're growing, you start processing and you start realizing, like, okay, 
something needs to <laughs> needs to chill. Um, but I mean, I wasn't like disrespectful to my parents or anything yeah. like that. My, I'm thankful for my my parents, my father, and my mom, and I'm thankful for my brothers. Cause to this day, they probably say they taught me how to play the game, but in reality, my sister Kathy, she used to bust my butt. Uh, but I'm I'm like I'm thankful for. You know, my brothers and my sisters, my parents, my cousins, like, like we did it all. But USA gave me an opportunity. I was in, I was 18 years old, 17, well, I was old, 17, and I went to USA basketball, tried out, did, and I was like, nah, that's not for me. And I left, because I could have been on the Olympic team way before 2000, but I was like, nah, that's not for me. And uh, <laughs> Coach Alyssa, she always tell me, she said, let me tell you what Yolanda did. She was trying out for the Olympic team, and she was kicking butt, and she said, yeah. I'm done. And she left. <laughs> And I did. I left. But you had your reasons. My reasons was I just want to play ball. Right. I don't want it where it's structured yet. I don't want it where I'm told how to play the game. I want to be taught how to be the best. And at that time, I was a kid that just wanted to play the game and play it the right way without any pressure. Because once that pressure hits you, everything changes. Now you got to be the best. There's no steps to getting there. It's like it's there. And, um, and again, I got recruited out of eighth grade to go to Marshall, Whitney Young. My mom said, I don't think so. And we had a good relationship with the head coach at Carver High School. And if I was bad or I didn't do right, she benched me. And when I tell you I left campus to go and get something to eat because the food at the cafeteria was nasty that day. I wanted to be right for the game. Right. She benched me the first half. But it, things that she did, it was the right thing. A, a rim was bent, and we was trying to dunk. So we sat on, we, some, one of my teammates got on all fours, and we started jumping off her back and dunking. Like, I, we all had to run for that. Like, we did some, you know what I'm saying? Like, we did crazy stuff. But she was a coach. She was fair. She was a great coach. To this day, we still have a great relationship. When I got inducted into the Women's Hall of Fame in 2014, she was there. She wasn't able to make the Hall of Fame. But Coach McHugh was at the, the 2014 one, and then Coach McHugh was at the Hall of Fame. Those are my ride or dies. Those are my coaches that taught me how to play the game the right way, how to sacrifice for the game, and what to give back to the game. Um, so I'm thankful for those ladies that's in my life. And again, my mom, she, yeah, she did it right. That's awesome. Didn't matter, good or bad. She always carried a smile on her face. She always was there to help individuals, no matter what she needed and no matter if it, she wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you sacrifice so much as parents for your children. And um, now it's my turn. Yeah, that's great. When you look up in those Raptors, you see your jersey, you see Jerry, you see that championship banner but there's still no team here. Uh, I mean, how often do you get asked about that? What do you try to do on your end to, to even campaign to bring back the Monarchs? Well, I'm hoping and waiting for my jersey to be in the rafters. Um, but I look at it, opportunities come and they go. I look at if it's meant to be, it will be. But it's only one Monarch. Right. So, but to bring a team back to Sacramento, would be amazing because they have the fan base. They, they're hungry for it. So give them what they're asking for. Bring a team, a WNBA team, back to Sacramento. You won't regret it.